What's up, my comic comrades? Valiant Comics' first entry into their movie universe hits theaters this weekend with Bloodshot. And as friends and fans of Valiant Comics for some time now, we couldn't be more excited for them to make their movie debut. If by any chance you haven't read any Valiant Comics, you should definitely do so. Bloodshot, Exo Man of War, and Ninjak are just a few of their books and characters you should check out. As a matter of fact, we actually produced an in-depth Exo Man of War episode a while back which you could check out right here. Anyway, a lot of people don't realize, but Valiant has the third largest superhero universe in comics. That's kind of crazy. In any case, today is about Bloodshot, who is easily one of my favorite characters in the Valiant universe. It's not an accident he's the first of their heroes to get a movie. So like we do every time a cool superhero or villain gets that blockbuster treatment, we're here to give you his comic book history. Bloodshot was created by Kevin Van Hook, Don Perlin, and Bob Layton, and cameoed in Eternal Warrior issue 4 in 1992 before making his first full appearance in Rai issue 0 in November of the same year. Now, Valiant Comics as a company would be sold in 1994 to Acclaim Entertainment, but in 2004, Acclaim declared bankruptcy, and that ended that. But ultimately, Valiant would be revived many years later and relaunch their whole superhero universe in 2012, giving us the Valiant universe how we know it today, with new characters being introduced all the time, as well as keeping their legacy characters. So of course, Bloodshot was part of that relaunch, and he was introduced to a brand new Valiant audience. But now that I got you a little up to speed about how Bloodshot came to be in the real world, let's check out his comic book origin. Since the Bloodshot movie is going to be pulling from the Bloodshot from the 2012 relaunch, that's the Bloodshot origin we're going to be focusing on. Although, to be fair, relaunch or no relaunch, Bloodshot's origin has always stayed fairly consistent. Bloodshot is a former soldier who has an unclear past, who has gone by many real names, like Raymond Garrison or Angelo Mortali, among others. Although Ray is what he's being called in the movie, and it's what seems to be most common. He's a soldier or operative from the secret government group called Project Rising Spirit. They're an arms contractor in the Valiant universe who experiments on and sometimes even create super-powered beings, Bloodshot being their claim to fame. Long story short, they put nanites in Ray's blood, hence the name Bloodshot. The nanites gave him superhuman abilities, like the ability to regenerate from any wound as well as communicate with machines, and more, but we'll get into that later when I talk about powers and abilities. But in the world of superheroes, almost every gift comes with a curse. And in this case, the process that gave him his superpowers erased his memories. But the fine people at Project Rising Spirit just implanted new ones in his head to keep him motivated and working for them. But of course, just like other programs similar in nature in comics like Weapon X, this wouldn't last long, and Bloodshot would eventually break free of their control and begin doing his own thing, attempting to make up for his past sins and figure out who he really is. Now, with saying all that, Ray was Project Rising Spirit's most successful Bloodshot, but he wasn't their first. Project Rising Spirit's program to create the ultimate soldier goes back decades. The first versions of Bloodshot, like most initial things, were crudely enhanced and highly expendable soldiers that were made for only the simplest of missions. Over the years, the Bloodshot program was perfected, but they're still always looking to improve for the future and continue to break new ground. For instance, if you guys aren't familiar with the Valiant Universe, there's a character called Rai, who by the way is freaking awesome. He's a cyborg samurai. Anyway, he's from the future and was designed to look similar to the legendary Bloodshot by Grandmother. Grandmother being a free will robot that protects the nation of Japan in the 41st century. Well, Grandmother did this hoping to invoke the spirit of his heroic exploits in the people. But with Bloodshot's origin out of the way, let's take a look at some of his story arcs and publication history. Though Bloodshot is not that old of a character going by comic book years, he's already had over 10 titles if you count miniseries and tie-ins. Three of which were self-titled series simply called Bloodshot, the first one debuting in 93 and lasting for 51 issues, then you have his relaunch in 2012 that lasted 25 issues. And then you have his newest series, which is written by Tim Seeley, that is currently six issues in at the time of shooting this video. But now, let's take a look at some of the actual story arcs since Bloodshot's relaunch in 2012. Bloodshot's first story arc in his relaunch was called Setting the World on fire. It explores Bloodshot's past diving into his complicated backstory, to say the least, to try to figure out who his true former self is. Along his journey, he gets captured. That's right, the perfect military necessity, cutting-edge technology, walking WikiLeaks, and a reservoir of dirty little secrets that could set the world on fire has just been captured in his very first story arc since his relaunch. But again, he's the ultimate soldier, so he eventually fights his way free, ripping arms off and killing all sorts of people in the process. In his next story arc titled The Rise and the Fall, 
Bloodshot, Murphy, and Pulse break into Project Rising Spirit, or simply called PRS. They do this so that Bloodshot can finally figure out who the heck he really is. But Kara and Impulse eventually get captured, so of course it's up to Bloodshot to save them. In the end, Bloodshot comes into confrontation with Gamma. She's the caretaker, so to speak, for PRS. I think of her almost as the valiant version of Granny Goodness. During the fight, Pulse lost her life, but Bloodshot manages to come out with a win. So him and Kara leave with the children that were trapped in the facility. Next up, you have one of my favorites, and that is the Harbinger Wars story which takes place between Bloodshot's issue 10 and 13. Here Bloodshot teams up with PRS's deadliest escapees right after the Harbinger Wars break out all around him. So he tries to make the superpowered kids a force for good. If you don't know what the Harbinger Wars are, essentially a Harbinger is a superhuman telekinetic that both the Toyo Harada's Harbinger Foundation and the government's Project Rising Spirits have been trying to collect over the years. So when Bloodshot frees two dozen Harbinger children from PRS, the Harbinger Wars begin with Bloodshot caught in the middle. After this, we had stories like Bloodshot Hardcores, which deals with Bloodshot being part of a unit that's filled with a crap ton of dangerous people whose powers could literally mean the end of the team. Think of this as their version of the Suicide Squad as every mission is pretty much someone's last. Then we have Bloodshot Get Some, which deals with proxy wars and sponsored assassinations in a story about money, blood, and oil. We also have Bloodshot Glitch and Other Tales, which brings together several disconnected Bloodshot stories before we ultimately get Bloodshot Reborn, which is notably a fan favorite. It's widely regarded as one of the best Bloodshot stories because of how writer Jeff Lemire was able to get into the psyche of Bloodshot. As we all know, Bloodshot's nanites made him an unstoppable killing machine. He had superhuman strength because of it, super speed, he's literally the perfect weapon. And as the perfect weapon, he served PRS doing all sorts of violent stuff for them. But in this story, Bloodshot is now a shadow of who he used to be. He lives in self-exile, reeling from the consequences of his past life and the recent events that nearly drove him mad. But of course that doesn't last long when a couple of shootings by gunmen who appear to look just like Bloodshot begin and his guilt sends him on a mission to stop said killers. And then of course we recently have Tim Seeley's run on Bloodshot which has been super action packed and a ton of fun to read. Like I said earlier, it's only six issues in at the time of shooting this video, so if you're curious to start reading Bloodshot, especially with this new movie out, I highly recommend you check this title out. But now let's move on to powers and abilities. First and foremost, Bloodshot is a highly trained soldier being an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat and almost all forms of weapons. However, Bloodshot's primary abilities is the nanites in his blood, which allow him to heal and regenerate from almost all wounds, including missile strikes, gunshots, sub-zero temperatures, and even lack of oxygen. Bloodshot also has the ability to self-camouflage, being able to change his skin color to his surroundings. And because Bloodshot is also a harbinger, which I explained what harbingers were earlier on, he has the ability to manipulate machines. He could do this via an apparent telekinetic power enhanced by his nanite lace blood. He does seem to have to be within a 30 foot radius though for this ability to work. And this ability does seem to work best with computer based electronics as it has a natural affinity with his nanites. Then of course, he has all the normal superhero stuff like super speed, strength, agility, and reflexes. And not really a power or ability, but something I did want to touch on in this episode is the red circle or spot on his chest. Although it's become known as his symbol and logo, much like Superman's S or the lightning bolt on the Flash's chest, it's actually part of the character and not just the logo on his costume. You see, the spot on his chest is the only part of his body that does not self-repair. What I'm saying is, it's an open wound on his chest and an access point for the nanites since they're inside his blood. So when you see him wearing a shirt, you'll still see the red spot because it's the blood seeping through the shirt. Some artists will even make that apparent by having the blood drip down his shirt. But now my friends, it's time for some Bloodshot reading recommendations. If you guys want to read some good Bloodshot stories, I recommend checking out Bloodshot Volume 1, Setting the World on Fire, Bloodshot The Rise and the Fall, The Valiant, Bloodshot Harbinger Wars, Bloodshot Blood of the Machine, Bloodshot Salvation, and Bloodshot Reborn. First up for the week of March 11th, we have the Dollhouse Family Issue 5. The Dollhouse has taken away another piece of Alice's soul, but this time she's not running away. This time she's going to uncover the secret of the house's terrible birth and use that knowledge to destroy it once and for all. Now we have Marvel Spider-Man The Black Cat Strikes Issue 3. If you're a fan of the PS4 Spider-Man game, this is definitely a comic you need to check out. Here we have Star Wars The Rise of Kylo Ren Issue 4. The Rise of Kylo Ren concludes as Ben Solo, once the Jedi's greatest hope, is swallowed by the dark side. If you like Kylo Ren and want to know more of his backstory, definitely check out this miniseries. And finally we have The Flash Issue 751. The Flash battles Godspeed as Flash Age continues. In this issue, 
Paradox enlists Godspeed in his mission to erase the Flash legacy from existence. And that, my friends, is going to bring another episode of Variant to a close. But if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to check out our History of Exo Man of War episode right there. And if you like our channel, be sure to like and subscribe. It helps us out. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.